Dallas, Texas, home to over 5 million people. Statistics show that up to 14,000 of these people are homeless. We sat down and chose to interview one of these 14,000 to step into their world for a moment. James has been homeless for the past four years. He is a Katrina victim, a man who was HIV positive due to a homosexual lifestyle and a man wanting to make a new start here in Dallas. Born in Virginia Beach, Virginia, a beach bum. Grew up on a beach in the water. I'd go out my back door and step on the, on the, on the beach. It's a great thing. Um, my dad died of double pneumonia when I was nine. I love that man more than life itself. I think that's where my life started to turn. Um, my mom, who really didn't know much to do with me, sent me to a um, boys club camp. That's where I had my first experience at the age of 10 homosexuality. Well, I got up one night, it was like 3 in the morning, and uh, I heard some things happening in another tent. As it was raining, we were all in this one enclosed cafeteria area. And I saw a light on in the tent, and I walked over and opened the flap of the tent. And I saw a couple guys, and the guy looked up and says, why don't you come join us? And I said, okay, I didn't know any better. Okay, I was diagnosed with HIV in 2000. Um, I was, yeah, it devastated me. I cried. Yeah, I yelled at God because I know that it's a recompense for the sin that I, you know, committed. You know, you reap what you sow. I felt this wasn't fair. Okay, for God to be such a loving God that He is, why would He choose me to be this way, and then tell me that? I'm going to end up in hell. Um, so I went through my life, my times of hating God, my time of not caring much about it, because I didn't think he cared much about me. And then you had to deal with the churches and the people that believe that, you know, God hates fags, you know, turn or burn, this sort of thing. And I'm always hearing that God hates the sin, but, but loves the sinner. But I'm seeing through the church that the church hates the sin and the sinner. Um, I spent Bible college struggling through the army, culinary school, um, through this whole, living this whole lifestyle. And I was having a good time. Independence can go but so far, but when you want to carry it to the next level, you don't want to listen to anybody. You don't want to pay any bills. You want to use your money for what you want to use it for. Um, I was into drugs a lot at that time, drugs and alcohol. And, um, a lot of things that really I wanted to do means I ended up homeless. So basically it was a choice. Um, I don't believe everybody that's out there is out there because of a choice. I believe some people out there, yes, in their own hands. Some are just bad, bad misfortune. Okay, so what took me from a non-believer to a believer is that the realism that God is for real and that he does love me. I can see what he does for everybody else, but that does nothing for me. I know without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, in my life, that he's real to me. This church was bringing pizza. And I remember this guy, I locked in on this guy because I just felt like he knew what I was going through. I said to this guy, is, is this Jesus stuff really for real? And he looked at me and he said, yeah. And it's just the way he said yes that changed my life. That I actually decided to, you know, give God a chance. The Lord put Fellowship Church in my face about two and a half, three months ago. So I said, well, okay, I, I'll go, I'll give it a try. The people there, don't care really about what I used to be. And they care more about where I need to be getting to. Person coming to a church who's come out of this lifestyle, who's dealing with HIV, no, most churches, most Christians do not accept them. I like Romans 8, 28. It says that um, all things work together for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. When I figured, when I found out within me that God loves me, period, you know, I sort of went, okay, well then we can do this, reality. I need God, to, I need to know that he's real, I need to be able to touch him, he needs to be able to touch me, but I know I've been touched. And um, that's what got me from, you know, from the darkness into the light.